Hi, I'm Rohit. I'm a product manager here at Microsoft, and I'm here to give an introduction to the Azure MCP server. Before we jump into that, let's talk about LLMs. You may know of LLMs as generators of content, such as text or images. However, they're also capable of what's known as tool calling or function calling based on the intent. For example, if I gave an LLM a function called send email with a bunch of parameters on sending an email, I would describe that function to the LLM saying, use this function whenever the user mentions sending an email. So from that intent, when I send a message to the LLM, such as I want to send an email to XYZ, the LLM knows what method to call or what function to call. And this allows LLMs to perform agentic behavior beyond just generating text. They can actually do things such as send email. So that send email function would be defined by myself. There would be a custom function that runs and executes a piece of code that I can define. So that leads us into agents. So what is an agent? So an agent is a system that handles a lot of things. First, it handles persistent memory, so it remembers certain things. Then it has planning. So not on top of just basic generation, there is a plan to execute and perform operations. Third, like we just covered, there's tool or function use. So the, there's actual functionality that the uh, agent can perform. And then lastly, there's awareness of longer term goals. So nothing operates in a vacuum. It's all contained within an agent. So modern agentic systems use LLMs as the source of reasoning or decisions. Uh, using features like tool calling or function calling like we just talked about. The LLM here provides a decision layer for what happens in the agent afterwards. So let's go into some challenges at Regentic systems. First, let's talk about tool listing and communication. How do we define tools for any LLM? Certain model providers such as OpenAI have opinionated schemas on what function calling looks like, and those differ from model to model. If you wanted to build an integration with a certain tool, you would have to write a custom implementation for the OpenAI tool, function calling, and, and so on. Second, how do we handle context? There's context for all of the agentic operations. How is, how is that handled for one agent versus another? Then how do we handle static resource retrieval, such as things that don't change much, like file systems or documents and so on? How do we prevent vendor lock-in? So how does an agent not be super opinionated and be flexible to all the needs of your company or your product? And lastly, how do we design agents? What should an agent handle versus what should a tool that I define handle? How do we manage the contract between the agent and the tool? This is where MCP comes in. MCP, or the Model Context Protocol, is an open standard designed to streamline and standardize the way AI models interact with external tools and data sources. It was made by Anthropic, and Microsoft has embraced it across a bunch of different products. MCP defines two terms. First, it defines clients, also known as agents, and then servers, which are the providers of exter external tools and data. You may have heard MCP referred to as a USB-C for AI, and I think this visual does a great job of explaining it. So on the left, you can see MCP servers, access to systems like Slack, your email, calendar, so on, connected via a consistent interface, such as USB-C. USB-C is a one adapter system, meaning that if you build something that is an MCP spec for a server, and you have an MCP spec client, those hypothetically should be able to work with no issues. And this is where the real value proposition of MCP comes in. There's no specialized integrations you need to make. It's very plug and play and enables a lot of cool agentic scenarios. To better help agents on Azure, we built an Azure MCP server. And this provides your agents with Azure context and capabilities. We use authentication using Entry ID for security, and it allows for communication with Azure services in natural language. For example, an agent that uses the Azure MCP server can answer questions like, show me my Cosmos DB containers, or query my log analytics workspace. There's a lot of services and tools supported by the Azure MCP server, such as Azure AI Search, Cosmos DB, Azure Storage, the Azure CLI, and many more. You can take a look at our GitHub repo at aka.ms slash azmcp if you're interested. So we'll cover a few FAQs about the Azure MCP server. First, we use the Azure Identity Library for authentication, which is similar to our Azure SDKs. The Azure MCP server also uses these SDKs under the hood to perform those operations. We enable output possible via standard I.O. or server sent events for either locally or remotely hosted servers. However, we recommend running locally while the MCP authorization spec for remote servers matures. You can try the Azure MCP server with your MCP clients today. We have MCP clients all over Microsoft, such as Visual Studio, VS Code, and Semantic Kernel if you want to build your own agents. You can check it out at ak.ms slash azmcp. Next, let's jump into a quick demo of it in VS Code. OK, so I'm in VS Code now, and I've successfully installed the Azure MCP server. If you're interested in doing that for yourself, we have instructions in our GitHub repo, which is available at ak.ms slash azmcp. So now that I have the Azure MCP server installed, I can begin to ask it questions, such as list all of the storage accounts under my subscription. And you can provide the name for the subscription, but just for 
to prevent multiple tool calls, I'll just pass in the GUID for it and it will run. So what GitHub Copilot will do now is that it will take a look at the query that I want and then it'll realize that you want to use an Azure service or Azure or command. It'll then see all the tools available for Azure via the Azure MCP server and it'll pick the right one for the job. So you can see that it wants to run the storage account list tool via the Azure MCP server, it has a quick description and you can see what it passes in. One thing to note is that there's, all, there's a note for all of our MCP tool invocations. Just make sure that the MCP servers you use are safe. So I'll run that command. And while it's working, we can see that it ran, did successfully, and now it's printing them out. So you can see all of the different storage accounts that are available under the subscription here. We have a bunch, as you can imagine, since there's lots of developers on the Azure SDK. Okay, that was a quick demo of the Azure MCP server. If you're interested, again, take a look at ak.ms slash azmcp and stay tuned for more tutorials and guides on how to use the Azure MCP server. Thank <music> you.